when I first lost my sight, I said, Lord, I said, now, how are you going to take my eyesight when you just license me to preach a word? I can't reach a word now. We was at the stage of losing everything that we had. I went to the hospital and she was completely blind and I just freaked out. What would you do if you woke up one day and saw nothing but darkness? Pitch black darkness. I was 55 years old when I lost my eyesight, which meant I was most of my life I could see. Pat Russell woke up one day to find herself shut out from the rest of the world by a crippling blindness. I asked the doctors, uh, would I be able to see? It was easily anyone's worst nightmare she'd been trapped alone in a terrifyingly dark cave. Giving up was the easiest option, but she was also a minister, specifically chosen to preach the Word of God. This is her story. Minister Patricia Ann Russell. I'm a native of Georgia, born and raised there. I relocated to Philadelphia in 1988 where I met my husband. What's, what's this? Russ, what's this? Oh. We were married in 1989, June of 1989. Uh, to this marriage, he brought two boys. Uh, unfortunately, one of them deceased in June, uh, January of last year. And between the two of them, we have four grandchildren. The doctors told me that um, my right eye was good, that they didn't think that all I needed was just maybe a little laser and to remove some cataracts. When they got in, they found that there was a lot more damage than they had initially thought. I knew that they could not save the eye. And while I was out of it, I could still hear everything that was going on. I really couldn't respond, but I could hear. So after the surgery and I was in recovery, I asked the doctors, uh, would I be able to see, at least out of the right eye? And they hesitated, they wouldn't answer my question. I got very upset because they were not giving me answers. They were just beating around the bush and wouldn't give me, uh, wouldn't answer my questions and wouldn't tell me what had been said or, or just what they thought the uh, diagnosis would be or anything. So finally I said to them, I'm not leaving this hospital until you guys tell me what happened and what you expect to happen. And finally, after my husband talked to them, you know, they said, um, 
what I already knew, but I just needed that confirmation because at that moment, I started thinking, well, if I can't see, okay, okay, I, I have to find a way to deal with that, but what about my husband? So I started thinking more about how he was going to adjust to this because of all the plans that we had made and all the things that we were prepared to do, including my going back to school. I went to the hospital. She was completely blind and I just freaked out. All right there in the hospital. I mean, we didn't know what we were gonna do because everything in our life compared to sister of her and me you know, doing things together. I went back to my doctor for a checkup and he said that they couldn't save the eye and it was because of diabetes, retinopathy, and that there were no lifeline, no bloodlines going to my eye and that I could expect to be in a lot of pain. Have I had some crying days? Sure. I only remember two, maybe three times where I just really had a flood of tears. I mean, just, just, just really, really couldn't control it around him. I'm in this big box and there's just nobody in this box but me. Nobody can get in and nobody can, and I can't get out. It can be very lonesome in that box. It can be very uh, frightening and scary in that box because you feel like you just, it, you, it, things are caving in on you and, and you just can't get out. You don't have any, any way of getting, asking for help or anything. Sometimes the Lord brings me out and let me know that it's just in my mind. Uh, my cat will either jump up on me or rub up on me or um, the telephone will ring or uh, somebody uh, knock on my door. Something will happen or even if the television is on, the Lord will make, cause my mind to focus on something that was just said on the television. Anything to bring me out of that. We was almost at the stage of losing everything that we had. Do I want to see again? Absolutely. I really miss doing things for myself. I could pick up my car keys. I had my own car. My husband had his car. He went his way and I went mine. Now, Wait till somebody come get me. I had to kind of start over. I, I'm just easy to get off balance. Uh, Sometimes um, directional, I, I get lost. That's why I can ride paratransit and have to worry about riding the bus. Then I don't have to worry about walking out in traffic because my direction is, is off or because I lost my balance. So if you want to go straight ahead, you'll be going straight through the door. I'm coming out to the left. Diane, I'm going to make a turn from my right to left. Main foyer where? Main foyer leading out to Market Street at 13th. Oh, okay. concern was to not have her feel as though that blind would be a handicap because then that would put me at a stage of worrying and I'm very emotional when it comes to that.
That's a five right there. It was it was a five dollar bill, and they gave me MC twenty five. Uh, out of her money, right? Excuse me. You told me it was three dollars and sixteen cents. You give it to lady five. No, I'm not giving it to No, not unless it fell in here. Yeah, dollar here. Oh, oh, okay. All right, I didn't see it. All right, thank you. Oh, I feel something right there. The tactile. Right. So, so now that, that means I'm close to the edge, right? It means you're two feet from the edge. Okay. So one foot tile. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, you're directly opposite the door. Oh, no. Oh, this is, okay. I'm Cynthia Lister. I'm SEPTIS ADA coordinator. I work with the regional disability community and with SEPTA operations and engineering staff to make our vehicles and our facilities and our services as accessible as possible for people with disabilities. Okay, push once for help. Six. There's Braille. Once. Oh, I pushed the wrong thing. Testing. Just testing. Thank you. Okay, I reach it out to me. How do you read? Loud and clear. And also. This is Cynthia Lister, SEPTA ADA coordinator. Okay, thanks, Cynthia. Thank you very much. We are there to help make sure that our mass transit system accommodate all disabilities. Whatever the disability is, we help SEPTA based on the American Disability Act, equip their vehicles so that we too can ride those vehicles. Start menu, sound recorder to navigate D. Documents submenu, my documents, M, Y, Y, 2, Q, 2, the angels, dot, doc, Y. And this is what I spend a good part of my time doing, is um, writing and uh, uh, web search, uh, homework. So what I do is I prepare stuff to get her to go ahead on. She can do what she want to do in there. Uh, anything, if I go out from home, away from home, I prepare medicine and stuff in certain places. Then if she lose something, or she had to call me and I can tell her where to go at. It's sort of like a backup system in the house where I can tell her right where to go at to get it. I don't have to worry about clothes. I don't have to worry about safety. He takes care of all that. If I didn't know for sure how much my husband loved me, before I lost my sight, I know now. There isn't anything that he doesn't make sure I have. He monitors my medication. He fixes it so that on a daily basis, all I have to do is take it. I don't have to wonder what is right or wrong. I don't feel as though it's nothing lost. I kiss myself. My wife is fine, but she still got hands. <laughs> it's only a couple things that I really miss used to her fixing me a cup of coffee every night before I go to bed. She make sure no matter what I do when I come in, I have a cup of coffee before I go to bed. And I'm used to when I'm out somewhere, I can call it, I can call it, come and get me, you know what I'm saying? That I miss. When I first lost my sight, I said, Lord, I said, now, how are you going to take my eyesight? 
Well, you just license me to preach a word. I can't read your word now. I can't stop it. He said, I got you. So everything that I, every question that I, I could come up with, he said, I got you. And he has me. If you can't preach to your own first, Amen. how can you go out there and tell somebody Amen. else? If you can't preach to the Jews first, how can you go to the Gentiles? Yes, they rejoiced, and 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 they rejoiced. They, rejoiced. they praised him. They loved him. They remember stuff that they had forgotten. They started understanding a lot of the stuff that he had told them, and they rejoiced. They rejoiced. They rejoiced That's because still now rejoice. they have hope. They still rejoice. Still, oh, come on, brother Reed. They still rejoicing, and, and and now we ought to be able to join them and start mm, rejoicing ourselves. Because if it was good for them, it's good for us. I have these little little uh, bumps or little markers oh, and maybe that? and maybe it, what they could do is instead of um, they could put uh, in a corner somewhere a, a, a couple of marks I mean I just put that on it just so I know it when I'm going through my purse for something I know what this is well it's uh, it. it's curious because it's sometimes the uh, the non-technology fixes are the best mm -hmm. Who is this? Judy. Hey, Judy. Um, hey, Emery. Judy, when you get a chance, baby, uh, I guess after you do the lunch, I know there's one person up here that didn't sign in when she came in. Okay. Miss Aura, does everybody, everybody but Miss Aura, have your tokens or have you signed in? I signed in. All right, Miss Aura is down there. As far as I know, yes. I am so satisfied, I am so, so this, mm, then this world could ever offer, I am, I want you to cut it off, okay, can ever offer, I am, that's what I want, okay, all right, let's go, let's do it again, Altos and Soprano, I am so satisfied, I am so satisfied with myself. I help her a lot. I help her walk around the church and I go to the store for her whenever she needs me or I do a lot of stuff for her. She always been there for me and she always helps me out with like everything I do and tell me good get good advice. <laughs> This is our godmother. We love her to death. It's our mom. Yeah, She's always kept her faith and stuff in God. That has not wavered. She's always been strong, vibrant, a go-getter, you know, always on her toes about everything. And since she's lost her sight, she hasn't slowed down. As a matter of fact, she's gotten more busy and more enthusiastic, more encouraging, just like it's been lifted, her, her spirituality in Christ has been lifted. <laughs> Pat is an absolutely amazing person. She is a true testament what a person can do when they put their mind to it. Uh, I'm personally very fond of Pat. I uh, work with her on a professional <laughs> level a lot but I also consider her a friend. She's an inspiration to me. She is nobody's victim.
There's a scripture that says, God will put no more on us than we can bear. And every time I want to complain, I say, hold up. What are you complaining about? Look at the strength you have. Look at the power you have through God. And then I have to, I, I have to really look at it. And, and the Holy Spirit just, just, just comes back and gives me a hug and, and reminds me that He loves me and reminds me of all the good things He's doing, that He's done, He's going to do. He allowed this disability to come up on me because He knew that I could handle it. I am enjoying being blind, mainly because I am still able to do the work that God had called me to do. So if being blind is this how God had to get me there, then I'm there. And I gladly accept the challenge. They say that when one sense is lost, another one is strengthened to compensate for that loss. In Pat's case, although her eyes could no more see the light of day, her mind gradually illuminated. It shines with the splendor of faith and surrender with which she leads others like herself from darkness into the light. <laughs>